and welcome to week two of i've got to just upend you a little bit there because you're you're on my library books sorry sorry <laughs> sorry oh god sorry oh god um week two of september's reading vlog that was such a lovely angle and now it's all gone to shit ever since i moved it um welcome it's wednesday it's actually like i've got bookish content for you on the wednesday now i haven't finished that's where my purse was i was worrying that i'd left it at work um I've been to the library today to pick up two holds that I had on books and two books have arrived in the post today, one of which I know what it is and I'm really, really excited about it, albeit about a week late, Waterstones, but don't worry, we'll sort that out later. Right, so from the library I've picked up today The Swan Book by Alexis Wright. Um, this is a book that I'm reading, um, I've never heard of Alexis Wright nor read any of her material before, um, and this is an author that was um, one of the bonus prompts on the Reading Women Challenge. There was a few bits, sorry if you can hear the fan by the way guys, but what would you say the degrees it is today near today, 45, 46? <laughs> It's so hot, we've got the heat. I've got, we've, got to go and play, we've got to go and play badminton in a minute. And I did <laughs> I did weights yesterday. I did a weight like on frames, so like sort of like fun weights, like dead, 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 bit take that, things like that. And my arms feel absolutely fine today, but my legs, every time I go to cross my legs today, I've literally been like. <laughs> so yeah, it's hot, I've got to go and play badminton. I'm on my period and my legs are really hurting. But I have got this one book by Alexis Wright. This sounds, I, I had no idea what it was about because I literally looked at um, what Alexis Wright books they had in my library. This was the only one and I put a hold on it. It's set in dystopian Australia with Aboriginals still living under the intervention in the north of the country in an environment fundamentally altered by climate change. The Swan Book tells the story of a mute young woman, Oblivia. Um, so yeah, it sounds fantastic and I will be getting started on that shortly. And then I've also got Christmas in the hottest day. Uh, we had my advent calendar in last week's vlog this week a christmas book zero waste christmas crafty ideas for a sustainable christmas now it is early i know however when it comes to crafts like you can't i don't want to be in a position where i'm starting a christmas craft and not getting it done i've already got a potential halloween craft i've started that's not going to get done i promise i will try and get it done david so yeah so i've got this which i'm going to um, have a little look through um and just maybe get some ideas and stuff. Already I saw something, I mean, David and I, we've certainly got enough advent calendars going, but I really look th like this, David. Look, jam jar advent calendar. So you get lots of different jam jars and then put a little toy on top of it and then spray paint them and then put nice things in them. But I mean, we have got enough advent calendars, so yeah. Those are the two books I got out from my library. And then the two books that have arrived today, I'll go in reverse order so I can show you the one that I'm really excited about. This has come from, Again, I think it's from Book Break. I requested about four books from Book Break. It is Five Tuesdays in Winter by Lily King. This isn't out until the 20th of January, 2022. And this is following Lily King's extremely popular book, Writers and Lovers. Um, she has been established as one of our most brilliant and beloved authors in contemporary fiction. So this is here, told in the intimate voices of unique and endearing characters of all ages, these tales, short stories, um, explore desire and heartache, loss and discovery, moments of jolting violence and an, the inoxorable, oh lovely word, tug towards love at all co costs. A bookseller's unspoken love for his employee rises to the surface, I'm already invested in that. A neglected teenage boy finds much needed nurturing from an unlikely pair of college students hired to house it. A girl's loss of innocence at the hands of her employer's son becomes a catalyst for strength. And a proud nonagenarian, does that mean someone in their 90s? I think it does, doesn't it? Uh, rages helplessly in his granddaughter's hospital room. Romantic, hopeful, brutally raw and unsparingly honest, some even slipping into the surreal. These stories are, above all, about King's enduring subject of love. Oh, lovely. I read an amazing book about love earlier this year. Um, so yeah, be interested in reading that as well. Is that one to hang on to till Valentine's Day? Oh, who knows? Um, and then this. Oh, the bother we've had with this, eh, David? Oh, this, yeah. This, I think, I mean, if it's not this, I'm going to be so upset. So upset. So this is, I think, Jamie Oliver's new cookbook. I say new, it was brand new last week and I pre-ordered it. Yeah, it is, it's come, it's come from foil, so it definitely is. I pre-ordered it from, oh actually, I pre-ordered it from Waterstones, weirdly, and this has come from foils. Um, I pre-ordered a, a signed copy. I didn't need a signed copy. I just thought, oh, I'm gonna pre-order it anyway. I'll pre-order a signed copy. And then, it didn't <laughs> didn't arrive on the day it was due, which you would have seen in my last week vlog. And then once I chased it up, um, they were like, oh, I'm so sorry, but the, 
the signed copy stock has really been delayed in getting to us so we haven't been able to send it to you so I could have gone out and bought it in a bookshop but it's here and it's signed this is together by Jamie Oliver this is a cookbook I heard his his off menu podcast David it was has, very very good has he apologised in the signature no he hasn't apologised in the signature I bet he's right hand imagine that Jamie O Jamie O Jamie O it's very big wow Jamie O Jamie O, over and over again. They get literal boxes of these to just sign. You must go mad. Um, and yeah, so I was listening to his off-menu podcast about this this morning. It's a book that was sort of like constructed and invented during lockdown when people were together. And they were saying that this is set in two different, um, different sections. Oh, here, look, David, table for two autumnal fair, cosy indulgence. Mm. I think we're gonna have a really nice time with this. So yeah, and different things. Now it's not a vegetarian cookbook, it is. Let's see if I can find something really exciting just for looking through here. Already that looks exciting. Apple and bramble crumble tart. Not something David would be excited about, but that looks lovely. The food photography in Jamie Oliver's cookbooks is always amazing. It's always done by the same guy whose name has escaped me, David Loftus. If I've just pulled that out, like, yeah, David Loftus. Oh, actually, two other people, Levin Biss and Paul Stewart. Colourful comfort. Oh, God, this looks amazing. So, yeah. So, now, before I go to badminton, I'm just going to sit and have a good few moments with my new Jamie Oliver cookbook that I'm so happy has finally arrived. I might cook something out of this. Oh, no, I'm not here tomorrow night. I'm at my friend's house for dinner. Sorry, David. Oh, we're solo tomorrow. You have to be by yourself. I'm going to cook something from this soon, real soon. She's back! I've been unwell. That's why there was no vlog, and that's why you're getting a two. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to mash up two weeks into one, so this should be going up next Wednesday. It's now Thursday. Cozy read tonight was lovely. Hopefully, I'll put up that vlog by now as well. I'm going to have a little lay down. Not a lay down, just a recline. Would you decline a recline? Come over here. No, stay there. Um, yeah, so went for a run Saturday morning. Cozy read tonight, lovely on Friday night. Went for a run Saturday morning. Thought. Oh, this seems to be a bit tough, but I, I have been finding it a bit tough. And then went home, was doing chores, and I had to keep laying on the bed because I felt so awful. And then after that, I was just shivering and freezing one minute, boiling and sweating the next minute. Every single part of me ached, down to like my knuckles and even like my little knuckles. My hair hurt. Oh, God, just everything hurt. And uh, yeah, I was just completely out of it for like two days. Um, and I only really started feeling mildly better yesterday. Now I imagine it's probably a combination of sort of rest and taking paracetamol and stuff like that. But also, I started taking Barocca yesterday, which has turned my wee a lovely colour of lurid yellow. Um, but also I started feeling better. So I've put my entire, my entire recovery down to the, <laughs> the Barocca I started having yesterday. Um, so yeah, there we go. Um, but not much reading was done while I was poorly um, because I just couldn't concentrate on anything um, but I did start and finish a book because all of the books I was reading before I thought oh well I've, I've invested a bit of time into them and I want to concentrate on them so I picked up a non-fiction book that I thought would be sort of quite lightish and it, the, 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 it, it, it was in some ways this is The Corner Shop Shopkeepers, The Sharmas and The Making of Modern Britain by Babita Sharma a non-fiction book about corner shops in the UK it offers a sort of social history um, from the the 1940s up until the modern day and like the part that um, corner shops have played in that and um, yeah certain aspects of it I found interesting and nostalgic I, I used to work in a sort of corner shop come mini supermarket from when I was 14 getting paid well below the minimum wage <laughs> um, and working far more hours than a 14 year old should be um, up until I started university the same shop um, and there was aspects of that that were reflected in here and like this, getting to know your customers and what they want and things like that and different people who wanted to chat and, and stuff like that and the people that worked in the shop and yeah I, I enjoyed aspects of that but there was this whole sort of thing that ran through it a whole thread that ran through it that Babita which I was confused about because in some parts Babita seemed to be quite anti-Tory um, which I I'll hold my hands up am but she referred to Margaret Thatcher so fondly throughout this, referring to her as Maggie, and she appeared a lot. Now, Margaret Thatcher, she was Prime Minister um, of this country in the 80s and 90s, I think, 80s. Um, 
and I do not agree with her politics and I do not agree with uh, the things, the way she feels about women and immigrants, etc, etc. What was that? Um, but, and she was the daughter of a shopkeeper. So yes, you might think that that would appear once or twice in here, but it appeared in every fucking chapter. <laughs> she was referred to as Maggie and sort of, oh, I don't know what Maggie would think. I wonder what Maggie would think if she was looking out the window. And it was just a bit too much sort of fondness and, um, yeah, I didn't enjoy that part of it. That is a complete personal preference. There are other people who will uh, enjoy Margaret Thatcher's politics and things like that who probably thought that was a lovely little charming aspect to this book. I did not, so I gave it two stars. Um, and then I've also just finished, this is also another two star book, um, The Flavours of Love by um, Dorothy Coombson. I've been meaning to read to Dorothy Coombson for a long, long time. Um, a friend of mine recommended me her books. And when I started listening to this, um, I thought, oh, maybe this could be a little like Nikki French uh, replacement and started thinking, oh, I'll have to tell Jen about that because Jen's desperately looking for something as good as Nikki French. But this story um, started with, and there'll be spoilers in this bit, I guess. Um, the, this story started with, um, the character, the main character, whose name was Saffron, and her husband referred to her as Fronny, which I didn't like anyway. Um, <laughs> and, uh, her husband gets murdered in a seemingly uh, random attack. Um, and it turns out that, no, it wasn't a random attack, and Saffron actually knows who did it. And there is sort of like, for reasons I didn't really understand, she wasn't going to the police about for a minor detail that maybe like never really came to light that would have potentially got her daughter in trouble. Also, her 14 year old daughter was pregnant. So all of this was going on. And then slap bam, literally like halfway through, this really, really heavy um, eating disorder chat started coming in. So trigger warning for eating disorders but like talking about how the food would feel in her mouth and like I've never had an eating disorder I've definitely had problems with food in the past counting calories restricting what I was eating I guess that probably is an eating disorder um but never anything that inquired in, uh, required intervention um but yeah there was different parts in this where I was thinking fucking hell this is really heavy and I'm glad I I'm not triggered by this sort of thing because I can see it being completely triggering and that came with no warning there was nothing on the back of the book that said anything ref uh, uh, anything that referred to an eating disorder and just having read a Marion Keys book where eating disorders are um, it, one of the main characters has an eating disorder and how sort of sensitively and seriously that was handled um, in there I just felt it's a bit sort of flippant and just almost seemed like uh, I feel like it was being sort of promoted a bit as a wonderful way to deal with the death of your husband um, so yeah I, I didn't enjoy that bit and also the book itself was narrated by Ajoa Ando who is a, a British actress who and I've also seen her sort of interviewed on TV and I really like her as an actress and as a person but the last three books that I've listened to that she's narrated I've hated them so she listened to uh, she narrated take a hint Chloe Brown and you remember how much or, or get a life Danny Brown or whatever it was called you remember how much I hated that I hated that book and just her sort of like baby voices she does and like the sort of sexy voices and that sort of got reflected a bit in here the the saffron is getting letters from the person who murdered her husband throughout the book and the voice she puts on when she's reading the, the letters out it's just so silly and just I just thought oh my god just sometimes babes less is more <laughs> so yeah so I gave that two stars as well so that's the plan I'm still reading She Became the Sun and um, these are the two books I picked up on Crazy Reading Night A Bigger Picture and The Swan Book um, I don't know how I'm going to get on with The Swan Book I'm struggling to get into it I find the language very very um, difficult to sort of and the storyline very difficult to follow I'm 60 pages in I said I'd give myself 50 pages and around the 50 pages mark I thought oh maybe something's clicked here and I'm actually getting on with it but since then I haven't felt the same. So yeah, I'm probably about to finish She Who Became the Sun either today or tomorrow. I'm off tomorrow, it's Friday um, tomorrow and I'm off from work um, on annual leave looking after my niece, which will be lovely. So I don't know how much reading I'll get done there, but we are planning on going to the library, um, which will be nice. She's got a library card. I must remind my sister to give me her library card. I'm gonna go and pick her up some books and things like that. So that'll be nice. Um, but yeah, that's where I've been and um, hope you're enjoying the old bumper reading vlog. Bye. Good morning, everybody on the reading vlog. Say good morning, everybody on the reading vlog. Good morning, everybody on the reading vlog. David, Minnie is being so cute. I can barely control myself. Look at she her. Is. She is. cute. Um, how are you all? It's Sunday morning, and my favorite thing to do, David and I have just been reading in bed. I love seeing David reading in bed. It's my favorite ever. Are you getting sort of vlogmas vibes, filming in bed? No. Oh, okay. Never mind. Um, what have you been reading in bed, David? Blue Monday. How are you getting on? Very good. What's happened? 
so I think Alan is a child snatcher. Oh! I get the vibe. Um, How far in are you? Uh, chapter 13. Almost, almost 100 pages. Yeah. Um, almost a quarter of the way through. Sandy wants to be official with Frida. <laughs> Frida's roof's getting fixed by <laughs> Joseph. It's all happening, isn't it? Are you happening. enjoying it? I enjoyed it. What do you it. like about it? Um, I just like how there's lots of like little stories and I'm looking forward to seeing how they're all like intertwine with each other and well, although some of them do already. So yeah, it's cool, I like it. Good, good, good. So book book news from David, done. He slotted his book up there. Up book there, news yeah. from me. Um, I finished She Who Became the Sun on Friday, but I haven't had a chance to um, to tell yous about it. I finished it. I was looking after my niece on Friday, and um, while she was having her nap in the afternoon, I only had about 20 pages of this to finish, and I did. So um, She Who Became the Sun by Shelley Parker Chan as a sort of epic um, tale of uh, Zhu Chogba, Chongba, who takes on the identity of her brother uh, following a seer telling her brother that her brother will amount to great things and her brother dies um, of starvation and she then takes on his identity. Um, I loved the parts about Zhu, uh, Zhu Chongba, <clears throat> but there's a lot in here about war and about war tactics and things like that and those bits I was less into and I was just desperate to get back to, to Zhu Chongba. Um, so yeah, it, I gave it a four star, really, really enjoyed it. I would have enjoyed a whole story just about just following Zoo. I didn't feel like I needed the go away and find out about those bits. So yeah, very much enjoyed it. Um, and there we go. And that was, I read that it's got elements of fantasy in it. Um, so that made you make it quite a lot of noise. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and I read that as part of the Reading Women Challenge for read a fantasy novel by an Asian author. So that's that. Now I am reading, God, I'm really getting a slope down. Shall I sit back up again? I haven't got any trousers on and it's quite warm. So I've been sat with, oh, there's a bit, there's a bit of my no trousered leg. Um, then I have been reading, I picked this up on Cozy Reading Night and then I only just started reading it again this weekend. This is A Bigger Picture, My Fight to, be, to Bring a New African Voice to the Climate Crisis by Vanessa Nakate. Uh, very much enjoying Vanessa's um, non-fiction book about climate change, particularly um, how climate change affects um, African countries. She is Ugandan um, and that is the, 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 the viewpoint of this book, which I'm again very much enjoying what i am enjoying is that i feel like it's really written as though it could be aimed at younger audiences um climate change and stuff i guess wasn't that as much of a big deal was it when we, like we weren't as aware of climate change when we were younger no so i feel like this is a good opener um for for younger people who want to get involved with climate change and just also seeing it from a different perspective um I certainly didn't know a lot of the stuff that I've been reading in here. This isn't out until the 28th of October, but um, yeah, I'll, I'll probably finish. Oh, I don't know. Maybe I will. It's 200 pages um, because it's. I've got this much left, but when I actually look at it, that much is index. So I've actually got only that much left. So I've got about 70 pages left. Might finish that today. Who knows? And then in the post yesterday, this arrived um, from Picador. This is The Cat Who Saved Books by Suzuki Natsukawa. Look at that gorgeous front cover with a cat on it. Meaning you got, you want to see this? She couldn't give a shit. Um, this looks so autumnal and lovely. Oh, she's looking. There you go, Minnie. What do you think of that? She purred a bit. <laughs> do you like books about cats? Uh, this says, Natsuki Books was a tiny second-hand bookshop on the edge of town. Inside, towering shelves reached the ceiling, everyone crammed full of wonderful books. Rintaro Natsuki loved this space that his grandfather had created. He spent many happy hours there, reading whatever he liked. It was the perfect refuge for a boy who tended to be something of a recluse. After the death of his grandfather, Rintaro is devastated and alone. It seems we'll have to close the shop. Then a talking tabby cat called Tiger appears and asks Rintaro for help. The cat needs a book lover to join him on a mission. This odd couple will go on three magical adventures to save books from people who have been imprisoned, mistreated and betrayed them. Finally, there is one last rescue that Rintaro must attempt alone. It sounds adorable. I've got sent a few little goodies with it as well. Here is a lovely bookmark with a cat on it. There you go, cat bookmark. Lovely. Then I've been sent this, which I believe is a coaster in the shape of a cat. Sleeping. Then, this I'm excited about, I've been sent these socks. These are adorable, these socks. Little 
slippers, I don't know, what are these called? Trainer socks. And they've got a little embroidered cat on the back. Look at that adorable cat on the back. And then, lastly, this is lovely. I very rarely get sort of like little press packages with goodies in. So I was very excited. This is a beautifully bound um, notebook with this sort of bound spine. Absolutely beautiful. So yeah, what a lovely treat of things to get with that. So that's going on my TBR for the month as well. Um, sounds adorable, sounds very cozy. Oh, maybe I'll take it on holiday with me. It does sound quite cozy. So yeah, so those are book updates. David, what does our Sunday look like? Um, you're all so, yeah, you're- I'm sort of having a wardrobe, yeah. Wardrobe Although it's still swamp. really warm, it's 21 degrees today. It's gonna to rain all afternoon, but yeah, no, I'm very excited. That's why we need rain. to get to the storage before it rains. Pronto, boy. Um, Although it's gonna, uh, I've been, I've been, <laughs> pronto boy, I've been changing over my wardrobe from my spring summer wardrobe to my autumn wardrobe, just because I want to get a bit ahead of the game because I've got um, October outfits coming up or outfits October coming up in October, um, and I know that there's stuff that I require in my autumn um, outfit or in my autumn wardrobe, so um, we need to do that. And it's David's birthday next weekend, and I don't really want to make David do wardrobe sorting. Are you going to do a bit of wardrobe sorting now today? Maybe. I mean, I haven't really got that much. Maybe. And then we're going to our friends Kate and Alex for a takeaway tonight and to play board games. Kate has messaged me. She said, how do we fancy Turkish? Yeah. Yeah. That's decided. Yeah, Turkish. Um, oh, what, from that new place? I don't know. Yeah, maybe. She sure. sent me a link. I'll show you. Awesome. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, so that's our Sunday. Exciting. I suppose we should get on with it, shouldn't we? I won't whip this up because of no trousers on. Bye. Oh, hi. Happy Monday. I've got my utility belt on. This is my running belt. It's what I do running with. Um, I just thought I'd have a quick check in before I go out for a run this evening. David's been playing tennis quite, quite regularly, twice a week. And I've been going along with him while he's playing tennis and running, which is nice, which means I get my run done. So he plays tennis for like about an hour and I run and then go and sit and read for a bit. So I'm about to take Felix Ever After by Case and Calendar to start this because this is my Patreon book club book. And would you believe it? It's almost the end of the month. So I'm going to read the first chapter and then film my initial thoughts video tonight when I get back. Um, but I also just wanted to fill you in with a couple of books that I got from the library. The fridge door's open, isn't it? It's a bit cheeky. A bit cheeky of me to have the fridge door open. Um, I, can she do it? Um, I went to the library on Friday. I was looking after my niece for the day, which was lovely. My mum and dad have been on holiday. Oh, and normally they have my niece on a Friday. Um, but they couldn't. So my sister said, please, would you look after your niece? And I said, it would be my honor. Not quite as cold as I want, but it will do. Um, so I looked after her. So we went to the library. We spent a lot of time saying, get another book, Lauren. Get another book, Lauren. So she just sort of sat and had a lovely time in the um, in the child section, just shouting and pointing at the, the very hungry caterpillar and having a lovely time. So I didn't get to have a full browse, but as we were in the children's section, I was able to have a look at some of the children's books and I ended up getting out two children's books for myself, as well as a whole host of picture books for my niece. Um, so the first one I got was um, Show Us Who You Are by Elle McNichol. You'll know that I've just listened to the audio book. Well, I say just, I think it was the last time I did one of these um, reading vlogs, wasn't it? God, what was that called? A Kind of Spark. A Kind of Spark, which I really enjoyed. And this is, yeah, from the author of A Kind of Spark. Um, so this says, when Cora meets Adrian, she isn't looking for a new best friend. She doesn't want to explain that she's different, but Adrian surprises her. And soon she's drawn into a whirlwind of fun, adventure and true friendship and on the world of the mysterious Pomegranate Institute. Oh yeah, that is mysterious. I've got to go because the battery's flying. So I'll also just throw it to show you that I also got Angrosaurus Rex, um, Darcy Burdock by Laura Dockrill. You will know that I love Laura Dockrill's um, big bones and I've been meaning to read more of these and it says here the new Tracy Beaker and I used to love Tracy Beaker when I was younger so yeah these two I got out from the library better go because my battery's gonna go I've got to go for a run talk to you later bye welcome to the last day of the vlog and it's just a quick check-in because David's just pointed out that it's Stri no, not Strictly Come Dancing Bake Off tonight David you mustn't leave that there that's that's my biggest fear of mini eating things like that bit of plastic um it's bake off tonight to do with me. I don't i'm know taking off from. any new 
items of clothing. Okay, well, if it was me, I'm sorry, but I don't think it was because it was on there, and I don't think I've done it. It wasn't like me. That. Like um, it's okay. Bake Off tonight. <laughs> <laughs> it's bake off tonight and um i'm actually just home from work i had an absolute clear run on the way home david it's half past four it literally took me half hour to get home that's unbelievable um and i'm going to make a cake for tonight um i'm going to make something i think i've got stuff i could make that bread and butter pudding orange bread and butter pudding yes you want that yes and then you can have the rest of it tomorrow. Yes. I can have it for breakfast as well. Oh, that's cheeky, <laughs> that is. That's it. That's the naughtiest breakfast ever. That's worse than having a Pop-Tart. Well, I'm a naughty girl. <laughs> so I think I'll make that. Um, but I just wanted to check in with my reading before we finish. What are you doing? You're just looking at pictures of puppies and cats. Um, I finished uh, a bigger picture. Uh, my fight to bring a new African voice to the climate crisis by Vanessa Nakate last night. This book isn't out until the 28th of October. I enjoyed this very much. I've given it four stars. Um, it's very much aimed at a younger audience, which, to be honest, I quite got on with because the topic itself is so fucking terrifying climate change um that the way this was sort of like packaged it doesn't shy away from any of the facts or anything but it's definitely very well balanced um i also found it very enjoyable hearing it from a african perspective rather than somebody who lives in the northern hemisphere um and um sort of like the challenges that um that vanessa and uganda as that's the country that she's from um are facing in particular um and yeah i i appreciated sort of like the way it was pulled together and then i also enjoyed the what you can do section at the end and it's sort of i mean in terms of climate crisis i feel like we we do the best we can between uh, me and you don't we i'm vegetarian david was a vegetarian until about three weeks ago maybe longer than that longer weren't than you that, yeah um we're very good we've, we've we're signed up to all sorts of companies that involve us not using plastic for example splosh and um wild deodorant and what else do we use oh who gives a crap for our toilet roll and mm -hmm. things like that so we're doing our very best we've got one car that we use for the very bare minimum to get to work and stuff yeah um and yeah so we we, we try our best we never fly We've looked, the whole time we've been together we've only ever flown once haven't we and that was yeah, yeah, in yeah. Ireland um, so yeah we're, we're doing our very best but there's always more that can be done and this sort of explores that as well so yeah I um, I enjoyed this very much and as I said I gave it four stars I'm also listening to I picked up two audiobooks both from um, uh, comedians in the past day uh, so I'm listening to the audiobook of Side Splitter by Phil Wang I'll move here so I can input a picture of it here this I'm really enjoying and I'm actually almost at the end of it I don't know why I didn't finish it off today instead of starting a new one but hey I think I wanted to elongate it a little bit because I've been enjoying it Phil Wang is a, uh, a, a, a comedian and um, he is um, half English his mother is English and his father is um, Malaysian Chinese um, and this book is a sort of comedic as he is a comedian look on what it's like to be half or to be from one place and living in another he was born in the UK and then they moved to Malaysia um, and he lived there until he was 16 and then he moved back to the UK um, and the differences in culture and his sort of growing up experience and I've been very very much enjoying it um, and also coincidentally I think because this book has literally just come out and um, he's appearing on um, a few podcasts that I listen to as well so I listened to him on the How to Fail podcast and found that a really interesting insight that sort of like to listen to alongside this book so yeah very much enjoying that and I find it very very interesting and well, there'll be more more thoughts on that once i've finished it and then today as i said i don't even know the title of this one i picked up josh widdicombe's memoir which is told in david you'd like this it's called watching neighbors twice a day how 90s tv almost prepared me for life and it's sort of his um memoir of his life told through tv shows so so far oh, we visited like tv shows such as fun house which was something i used to love watching oh when God, i was younger um and uh, yeah he sort of t t so it, it's interesting i think it's quite niche in terms of like you'd have to like whereas the phil wang one i think you would you would get something from it regardless of whether or not you knew Phil Wang this is very much like Josh's life and niche in terms of like 90s TV so I feel like it's very sort of like UK centric book but both of which I'm enjoying I'm also going to finish Catch the Rabbit by Lana Baz Tazik um 
I put this down for a long time and uh, forgot about it to be honest but um, I'm going to pick that up I might even go into well, I've got to do the thing is I've got to do me I've got to do my Patreon book club because I said I was going to do that yesterday and it absolutely peed it down when we, I was out for a run so I didn't get a chance to read a chapter while I was while David was watching tennis playing tennis and then dinner took ages to do last night didn't it David oh I've got all these excuses but that's what but also I received a book in the post today so I'm just going to open this and see what it is I don't know what it is sometimes I have an idea of what it's going to be Ooh, oh, this is exciting. Oh, this isn't even out until next year. This is, oh God, the front cover is gorgeous. This is Devotion by Hannah Kent. Hannah Kent wrote Burial Rites, which I read many, many years ago when I first started Booktube. Very much enjoyed that. And this, oh my God, it's, it's barely got anything. It just tells you this. On a treacherous voyage across the ocean, the bond between two young women proves too strong for even nature to break. Oh, that is exciting. Yeah, that's not even out until um, until February. So, yeah. Oh, God, how exciting is that? I feel like I've, with, with books that are coming out, I always feel like I have to leave it till at least the very year. So maybe that will go on the old shelf until 2022 and I'll pick that up then. Oh, yes, I remember Burial Rites, very atmospheric, set in Iceland. Am I right? It's the one set in Iceland about a woman who um, is being... Am, is that the right book? A woman... Let me know down below if it is. A woman who's been um, found guilty of murder and she has to live with a family until her, um, the date of her, uh, the date that she'll be killed is happening. Is that what that is? But very atmospheric and enjoyable. So I imagine very atmospheric this as well. Oh, oh, excited about that. So yeah, so that is my reading wrap up for two weeks. Um, I hope you enjoyed the two week sesh of it shame i won't get to show you any cakes that i'm gonna make but i have i have got to edit this and get this up guys so there'll be no cakes i'll put a picture of him in instagram go and have a look at that go on and i'll see you all again soon for another booktube video goodbye